so we have already downloaded the Drupal and I have copied this and uncompressed it into our this link. So as mentioned earlier, first of all we will move all the files to the actual this thing. So show hidden files and we will select all the files. You can do this from the command line also, but I'm just displaying it here. So we've copied all the files over here. Can remove this directory okay so we have our Drupal copied into our document root you will copy the Drupal contents to the document root depending upon your system next what we need to do is make sure our database and other details are ready so I have created a database called as Drupal DB username is this password is whatever is the password will be utilizing this host is going to be localhost and the standard things so let's start the installation let's point it to our local machine by typing in localhost and since i have copied my Drupal files over there let's just start the installation process okay so this is the initial screen we have Drupal 10 over here we'll continue with the English language there are different installation profiles for our understanding we will continue with the standard installation process so here in this page you can see there is some verify requirements which is suggesting that certain php extensions file systems and other things are not here so if you are having any of these issues you need to resolve them and then we can go forward so we'll just resolve these issues and then we will continue okay so uh, we have installed the required packages now we will continue so here under the system requirements if you come across any of these issues that needs to be resolved so here it says the file system this particular does not exist and is not writable also so we will need to create that particular directory so what it says is sites default files so we will go to sites default we'll create a folder called as files and okay so i have created this and let's say try again so it says is not writable so we will have to make it writable so properties we will just for the permission we will make it read and write close let's try this again so it says this is available and writable now there is next issue is settings files so it says setting file does not exist there should be a file settings.php and it says to copy default settings to this thing and moreover it should be writable so let's do that so there is the settings.php we will copy paste it rename this file to settings.php and let's see try this again okay so it says it's not writable so let's change the permissions for this properties permissions read and write Read and write for the time being. Okay, so we have updated the permissions and let's try again. So our issues are resolved. Now, what it is asking is for database, the type of database. So we have MySQL 
here we are going to enter our database information which we already have copied over here in the advanced options if your host name is different you can change it port number is anything different then you can change it otherwise leave them to default and we are going to add a table prefix over here okay and save and continue So the installation is in progress in the backend Drupal is going to create the required tables and other things inside the database so there is a warning which says all necessary changes have been made to this settings.php you should remove the right permissions so let's do that Properties will go to make it read only for read only and read only. Let's get back to this. And here we will be entering our basic site information. A email address where automated emails registration information and other things that are there you can set it over here this should be a proper address so let's say Drupal test at .in. keep in mind this should be there this is site maintenance account that means the administrator so let's say uh, we will call it as dexter we will give it some password okay make sure you give a good password over here <laughs> okay so passwords have matched email address is there now you can set the country accordingly this basically helps in managing the time zone and other things so let's select the country time zone according to your requirement and we will leave this as it is check for updates automatically receive email notifications these are useful when you are actually installing Drupal as a actual system on a proper website so you will get updates whenever there is a security update or new release or other things quite helpful so with this your basic Drupal installation is done this is your basic interface and here you are logged in as that particular user You can log off from this one and again if you want to log in into this you can log in from here either this way or you can log in by going to the website slash user here you will get the login from where you can log in. this is where you can log in from and here we are logged in again 